Online schools are under the microscope these days. We'll explain some of the legal issues surrounding them. I'm Annie, and this is Law You Can Use. Welcome to the Ohio State Bar Association's Law You Can Use, where we answer commonly asked questions about different legal topics. Today, we're discussing online schools, and I'm joined by attorney Mark Weicker. He's a partner at Albite Weicker here in Columbus. He practices school and education law, and he represents parents, students, schools, and school employees, so he's a perfect person to discuss online schools with us. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Annie. So let's start with a really easy question. What exactly is an online school? Sure. Uh, well, online schools in Ohio are community schools, also known as charter schools. Uh, they are public schools. That means they receive dollars from the State Department of Education. And um, they are similar to traditional public schools, except for the fact that the schooling is online. Mm -hmm. And uh, the online schools, or at least most of them, uh, accept students statewide. So uh, they're not bound by geography the way that traditional public schools are. Uh, but again, they do receive um, uh, state Department of Education funds, which are redirected from the school district of residence, or the traditional school, to the charter school. Mm -hmm. And how are they different from homeschooling? Uh, a lot of people conflate the idea of homeschooling and online schools, mm -hmm. uh, but they are very different. Uh, homeschooling is a process where a parent or guardian applies uh, to the local superintendent to have their uh, child accepted from traditional public schooling. Most students are compelled uh, by the law to go or attend a school and with homeschooling uh, they get an exception and the parent or guardian or third party provides the, uh, the training or education and they have to meet certain qualifications and there have to be uh, certain, there's certain testing done for the students to make sure that the students are meeting certain ben benchmarks. Mm -hmm. uh, with an online school, the online school again is similar to a public school uh, where they, uh, the, the teachers provide the, the training, is just online, and uh, they are attending, the students are attending uh, as they're compelled to do under the law. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the basics of how an online school operates? Sometimes the online schools provide all the training uh, online. Sometimes it's a hybrid where they have the students come into computer centers or tutoring centers mm -hmm. and uh, do some training there. Uh, but for the most part, the entire curriculum is delivered online. Uh, so this can help students who have limited mobility. It can help students who may have faced bullying or harassment in a traditional public school. Uh, and uh, it also may not be good for a student who uh, is not self-driven enough uh, to follow the curriculum or attend class as they should. Mm -hmm. And what about extracurricular activities? Do online students have the same opportunities as schools or children who go to public schools, for instance? As of a couple of years ago, the state legislature passed a bill that allowed uh, students who attend online schools and really all community schools or charter schools, if the charter school itself does not provide the extracurricular activity that the student wants to participate in, they can uh, participate in their school of residence, the school district of residence. So it has to be a non-credit activity uh, that's offered by the school district of residence and not offered by the uh, charter school or online school, and they can participate. Mm -hmm. Is there an instance where it would come in handy to consult an education attorney uh, if considering or if I'm in an online school? Sure. A lot of the choices about uh, uh, schooling, whether it's online school or community school uh, or a traditional public school, are made by parents. However, it can be helpful if there are issues with uh, the funding flowing from the traditional public school to the online school or if there are questions about uh, the reputation or performance of the online school it can be helpful to consult an attorney uh, or any third party uh, with the information to help make a decision about the school. Mm -hmm. So one of the most recent instances of an online school being in the news is the Electronic Classroom of Tomorrow, which closed amid a funding dispute with the state. Uh, is there a precedent for something like this? Have we seen anything like this happen in the past? There have been uh, certainly community schools or charter schools close, which means those students have to be absorbed typically back in the traditional public school of residence, uh, but they can also be absorbed into other community schools or charter schools, or even other e-schools, uh, assuming that they uh, accept students from around the state. Uh, there 
I don't think there, there's a precedent for the uh, absorption of 12,000 students. Uh, ECOT was the largest e-school uh, that existed, so that was um, uh, quite a change for those students and quite uh, an undertaking for the State Department of Education. Mm -hmm. I know you can't comment on the individual circumstances of 12,000 different people, but do the individuals who found themselves unenrolled in school now have any legal rights that apply to them? Well, I think the starting point for that question would be that um, the students are compelled to go to school. So they have to attend some school unless they have the exception through homeschooling. Uh, and so those students will have to find either uh, or have to choose either a school district of residence that would be the traditional public school and they are uh, they do have a right to attend that school because again they're compelled to do so um, and they could also uh, select any other community or charter school uh, assuming again that they are open for enrollment another right that students have is that they have a right to receive their education record. This would be their cumulative education file from a school that they are leaving. And in this case with ECOT, they have a right to receive the full file, which would include grades, courses that they've taken, and even discipline records. And they should be able to get that from the school or from any school that they're transferring from. All right, well, those are all the questions I have for you. Thanks so much for taking some time to speak with me. Sure, thank you. If you have a legal topic that you'd like to learn more about, follow the Ohio State Bar Association on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and write to us using the hashtag LawYouCanUse. And to learn more about online schools and more than 600 other legal topics, go to ohiobar.org slash LawYouCanUse. And thanks for joining us.